Okay, so here we are at the beginning of chapter three, our giant unit on all things linear. Um, and we're gonna talk about first what it means to be completely simplified or the criteria that your solutions need to be and your answers need to be when I ask you to simplify something. Okay, and this is just part one, the basics. And the basics pertain primarily to things that are linear. Later when we study exponential functions, we'll learn about how to write an exponential expression that's all simplified. And when we do quadratics, we'll talk about these things called polynomials, and we'll talk about simplified radical form. So, but to start, we're gonna start with um, things we need for linear expressions and equations, and the way their answers need to be formatted. So when I say criteria for completely simplified, I mean how your answers need to look when you're done and box it off happy face. All right, now I'm not going to talk about the properties to achieve completely simplified answers. That's going to be in another video. This is just what you have to achieve. And these are the things that are uh, posted on my wall, and I gave you a handout when we talked about, you know, leaving answers as uh, improper fractions. So the first rule is to not leave any parentheses. So your expression is not simplified if there's still parentheses in it. So for example, if I see the quantity x plus 2 plus 2, this is not considered simplified. And so I can't leave my answer like this. Um, and there's a property I'm going to use called the associative property that allows me to change my parentheses, and I can add 2 plus 2 and get 4. So another example of something that is not simplified and an answer you don't want to see that we're going to talk about is something outside the parentheses, 3 times the quantity x plus 4. And you can't leave this either. And this is another property, or an, uh, we're going to use another property to simplify this one called the distributive property, which we'll talk about later. And then even later in the year, when we don't have linear, when we're in quadratic in particular, I'll take off that 3 and put an exponent on there. And then once again, you can't leave the parentheses, and there's a different way to deal with that. All right, so the second thing we need to talk about is the evaluation of multiplication. It must occur, so you have to evaluate your multiplication. So I don't want to see an expression like this because I can multiply 2 times 3 and I can get 6, right? So this is um, a frowny face kind of answer. I don't want to leave that. Uh, and if I look at 3 times x times x squared, this is another example of something that I don't want to leave because x times x squared can be simplified to x cubed. If I think about the definition of exponents, I can you know, expand x squared out and I get x times x times x, which can be re rewritten as x cubed. All right, so then powers with numeric bases have to be evaluated. So what I mean by this one is I don't want to see like 2 to the third power x because I know what 2 to the third power is. I can actually figure out that multiplication. Uh, so this is also frowny face. But if I see 2x cubed, this is fine because I don't know what x is, so I can't cube it. So I'm just going to leave it 2x cubed. All right. So the fourth rule is that coefficients come first. And I know when you guys were writing apparent formulas and equations, you know, I didn't care where you put the multiplication. I just cared if your rule would work. Uh, but now we're getting more sophisticated, so I have to make sure that your rules fit a format. So if I want to multiply x times 3, I don't write it like that. The coefficient has to come first, so I would write it 3x, not x times 3. Okay, next one, and this is a big one, and this is one of the ones that we're going to spend quite a bit of time on, and that means, uh, and this one is combining like terms. That means things that can be added are added together. Okay, and that's essentially what combine like terms mean. Um, so if I have x plus 2 plus 3, this is a big frowny face because I know what 2 plus 3 is. I can make it look simpler, so I'm going to add those two and by combining the like terms of 2 and 3. And I'll define what like terms are later. Basically what this says is anything that can be added is added and combined into a single term. So another case in point is 2x plus x. Well, I have two x's and another x. This is not the simplified form. The simplified form of this would be 3x, so this is also frowny face. Um, but when I describe things that are like terms, um, you're going to see that 3x squared plus 2x is indeed simplified because I can't combine squares and not squares. All right, now I've got two more left to go. Okay, so rule six is arrange terms in decreasing degree. 
the degree that is the highest degree is the most important one, so we like to see it first. I don't want to have to look for the most important term in an expression. So if I have 3x plus x squared, that is a big frowny face because I don't want the x squared at the end. It's more important. So for example, if I put a y equals in front of it, um, this would be a quadratic equation, and I want the thing that makes it quadratic in the front, not in the back. Um, and so with something that's linear, 3 plus x is frowny face because the x is more important than the 3, so I want the x in the beginning. And um, so when you start writing equations now for uh, tables and for graphs, um, I'm going to expect to see the variable terms come before the constant terms. If this were, you know, an arithmetic sequence in the first six weeks, then I'm okay with 3 plus x, you know, but we're not in the first six weeks anymore. So you have to write these correctly. So you have to arrange them in decreasing, decreasing degree. So highest degree first, lowest degree in the back. And the last one, and this is the one that's easiest to deal with, and this is just uh, simplify signs. So if I have, for example, negative 3 x minus negative 4, and that's my expression, I don't like the minus negative, so frowny face. And I'm going to do what you, what you learn how to do when you um, learn how to deal with integers. I'm going to combine the minus and negative and make it a plus um, using the definition of subtraction. And nor do I like to see something like this. I don't want to see plus and negative anymore. I want to see just the subtraction. And many of you already do this, which is great. Um, so we just have to get in the habit of always doing this. And so when I ask you to completely simplify an expression, or you know you have to simplify an, an equation, um, or you know one half of an equation, remember don't leave any parentheses. Evaluate any multiplication that can be evaluated, which is all multiplication. Um, powers with numeric bases you have to evaluate. Powers of variables are fine because you can't do anything with those. Coefficients come first, so that means the number in front of the variable in a single term uh, when it's multiplication like that. Combine the like terms, so you add anything that can be added, like 2x and x can be added, x and, uh, oh sorry, 2 and 3 can be added. And then the last two, um, arrange terms in decreasing degree, so higher degrees first, numbers by themselves that are just added or subtracted go at the end. And then simplify your signs, which many of you already do. So these are the criteria for a completely simplified answer.